Mark and Mark lifts up the humanity of Jesus. You see, Mark skips over the, any, any kind of birth. He skips over the, the miraculous conception and just jumps right into the ministry of Jesus. It's like Jesus gets baptized and he starts healing. He starts preaching. He starts delivering. Mark is focusing on the humanity of Jesus. That is why Mark doesn't spend much time on the birth of Christ. He doesn't even actually spend a whole lot of time about Jesus and after the resurrection. Because Mark is lifting up for us that Jesus feels what we can feel. That he has been where we have been. He's lifting up the humanity of Jesus. He has experienced what we have experienced. Isn't that good news for us today? That we have a God. We have Jesus who knows what it feels like to be rejected. He knows what it feels like to be abandoned. Knows what it feels like to be hungry and tired. Isn't that good news for us today? That the Jesus we worship here today knows what it, 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 it's like to be betrayed and denied. Mark lifts up the humanity of Jesus. And then you go over to the book of Luke. And if I can admit, Luke is probably one of my favorite uh, gospels. And this is where Luke is talking about the inclusivity of Jesus. Because Matthew wants us to know that Jesus came for the Jews. And he connects his Jewish ancestry. But then Luke wants us to know that Jesus did not only come for the Jews. Jesus also came for the Gentiles. Everybody in here, if you are not a Jew, then you are a Gentile. And I want to tell you that he came for you. Luke shows us, Luke shows us that Jesus hangs out with people who, who would have been kicked off to the side. People who were outcast. People who were dismissed. People who have been denied. People who have been disrespected in society. Jesus hangs out with the women. He hangs out with the sinners. He hangs out with the lepers. He hangs out with the least, the last, and the lost. And if there's anybody here today who was thankful that you made it into the family, Jesus didn't come just for those who got it all together. He didn't just come for the rich. He came for those who were broken, those who were falling apart. Jesus can meet you right where you are at, no matter what your age is, no matter what your race is, no matter what your financial status is, because Jesus came, come on, for everybody. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life in God. Come on, thank you. Jesus came for you. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, where you find yourself, and just thank God for Jesus that He came for you. He loves you. Come, let's thank Jesus. Matthew lifts up the lineage of Jesus. Mark lifts up the humanity of Jesus. Luke lifts up the fact that Jesus came for everybody. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now we get to our text, John. He's a little bit different. John has a little different swagger to him. He takes it from a different vantage point. You see, John lifts up the divinity of Jesus. Matter of fact, John skips over Mary, skips over the manger, skips over Bethlehem. John is like, if you really want to understand Jesus, if, uh, I'm not going to focus on the barn. I'm not going to focus on Mary or Joseph. For in the beginning was the word. word, the word, and the word was God. John starts copying the flow of Genesis and says, if you want to know about Jesus, you got to go to the beginning because he was in the beginning before the beginning began. And when this all ends, he's going to be there waiting for us to catch up with him because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Yeah. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end, the bright and morning star. He was there in the beginning. For in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory of the Father in through Jesus. What John is trying to get us to understand is that when you look at Jesus, you're looking at God. Jesus is majesty and manhood. He is God the Father in flesh. He is sovereignty trapped in skin. He is a king disguised as a kid. He is deity with DNA. Is there anybody glad today that when you look at Jesus, you are seeing the power and the goodness of our God? Come on, I just say God. To my 
context. This is what John is trying to tell us. <laughs> Whenever you fall in love with Jesus, you fall in love with God. Amen. Whenever you meet Jesus, you meet God. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful for Jesus. Jesus, God's representative. God knew that we couldn't become like him, so he decided to become like us. God saw us try to become like him, so he came down to us. Jesus, according to the early church fathers at the Council of Constantine, in 451 AD, they decided the best way to describe Jesus is that he is fully divine and he is fully human. Meaning he is fully God and he is fully man. Oh, Jesus, I want to preach this. <laughs> Meaning where he can touch the sky, but he can stand on the soil. Hallelujah. As a human, he was born in a manger, but as God, angels sang at yeah. his birth. As, as a human, he had no place to lay his head. But as God, he said, in my father's house Woo! are many mansions. Yeah. As a human, he said, I thirst. But as God, he said, I am the living one. Yeah. If Come anyone on. drinks of me, they will never thirst again. As a human, he said, I got hungry. But as God, he said, I am the bread of life. As a human, he walked through doors. But as God, God, he said, I am the door. As a human, he asked if this cup could pass for me. But as God, he said, nevertheless, as a human, he dies on Friday. But as God, he steps out of the grave. Oh, Woo! Hallelujah. I am the Praise God. I am the Lord. Come on, I just thank God for Jesus. Come on. He knows how to get you. Woo! He knows how to heal you. He knows how to help you. I just thank God for Jesus. Amen. 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 Come on. All right, John chapter 1, verse 1. <laughs> and the surrounding verses they tell us a little bit more about Jesus they tell us who he is they let us in the know of the person behind the red letters here's why I thank God for Jesus and everything that he's done in my life and this is why we can thank God for Jesus here today number one write this down Jesus is the Logos Come on, say logos. logos. In the beginning was the word. You didn't know you, you could speak Greek, did you? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In the Greek, it would read, in the beginning was the logos. Simply meaning the logic of God. The order of God. The divine wisdom of God. Write this key thought down in your notes. When God showed up in the world through Jesus, he was order coming to disorder. When God showed up in the world through Jesus, he was order coming to disorder. He was the logic of eternity coming to the illogical earth. He was reason coming to the unreasonable he was the logic of God. And wherever Jesus went, he kept putting stuff back in order. Praise God. <laughs> Come on. You may look at your life right now and say, yeah. man, there is chaos. There is all kinds of disorder. But I want to remind you and let you know that the God of order is in this place. Hallelujah. He is in this place. And where there's chaos in your life, he can bring freedom. He yeah. can bring hope. He can bring life. And he can bring order into your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Preach it, brother. Everywhere Jesus went, he brought order. He steps out of chapter one and goes right into chapter two. And there's a wedding that ran out of wine and Jesus took a bottle of Deer Park and turned it into Merlot. <laughs> chapter three, Nicodemus is wondering, how do I become born again? Jesus says, you need to become born again in the spirit for God so loved the world. Yes. Then he steps over to chapter four and there's a, there's a woman at the well and she's looking for water to quench her thirst. And Jesus is like, hell, oh, I am the living water. Stop searching. All you have to do is find me. Amen. 
He is the living water. Then he yes, says, he chapter is. five, and there's a man at the pool of Bethesda, and he's been laying there for 38 years and paralyzed, and he's trying to get help. And in a single moment when he encounters God in the flesh, who is Jesus, he is healed. Jesus brings order wherever he goes. 5,000 people are hungry. He sets it in order. He meets a blind man. He sets it in order. There's a woman caught in adultery. He sets it in order. Praise he walks the Lord. Up to the tomb Hallelujah. Where Lazarus lays dead. Jesus calls him out by name. Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus walks out of that grave healed and whole. Everywhere that Jesus went, he brought order. And I feel as though there's someone here today. You feel like your life is spinning out of control. You feel like it's unraveling. I want to let you know that Jesus, the Logos, the order of God, he is here. He wants to bring your life back in order here today. There is nothing that you face here today that is too great for our God. God, simply put your faith in Him today because He is everything that you need. And Jesus is the Logos. He will set everything in order. Number Praise two, you, Jesus. Jesus is the life. Praise you, Jesus. Come on, say life. 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 John 1, 4, in Him was life. Life. And the life was the light of men. When you look at Jesus, you are looking at life. Now, in the Greek, there are two words in the, in the Greek translated in the Bible for life. One is bios, and the other one is zoe. Bios is where we get the word biology. The study of life, or biography, which is the story of one's life. Bios speaks to the things pertaining to life. But that's not the word that is used here in our text. The word translated to life here in our text is the word zoe. And that means the life of God. The eternal life of God. A dynamic, a fruitful, joyful, and fulfilled life. 